Hey, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for joining me here on Exploit Security. As usual, I'm your host, CyberMonkey, and this YouTube channel is all about documenting my journey to earning the OSC. So I'm actually really excited this week. Um, I finally finished, in, finished up all reading the content and kind of going through some of the videos for the PWK. Uh, for those of you that did not catch the, the last few videos, especially from last week, I recently started the PWK course, which is the course that comes hand in hand with the OSC certification. So it has taken a lot of time and I apologize, I have not been able to mass produce the same amount of content and quality, but now that I'm kind of getting settled in, especially with COVID going around and the, you know, every, the civil unrest that's been circulating, um, you know, it's been a little bit difficult getting settled in and kind of picking back up where I left off, but I think I'm finally starting to get there. So I want to start kind of jumping back onto the we we'll certainly start expe expecting some more content with better quality as we progress. Um, and on that note, you know, I have gone through the comments. I've gotten a lot of comments this last week. It's definitely ticking up a little bit. Thank you so much for all the kind words. I greatly appreciate it. I love the support that's coming along the way. Definitely keep it coming. It makes me feel good. I'm happy to know that I'm helping everyone else, especially because when I first started in this two years ago or so, you know, I was finding a lot more complex, more technical stuff, but nothing to at such a basic level where I was able to pick up a basic understanding. So, you know, I kind of felt lost, kind of jumped. So I want to be able to help and create that gap where I feel like there's a, a shortage, especially for us beginners. Um, and as a reminder, I am a student. So if you have a better way of doing things, do not hesitate to kick it in the comment section. Um, and also, I've recently just reconfigured my slobs, which is Streamlab OBS. Um, I've just reconfigured it, the mic as well, voice being your banana, so I can stream some music through and show different content. But let me know down in the comment section how everything sounds and looks, um, so I know if I have to make any more improvements. If it sounds good, great. If not, let me know. And while you're at it, please go on and like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way. I appreciate your support. And once we hit about 500 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. I just want to be able to show the love in return. And um, without wasting too much of everyone's time, let's go on and jump into it. I'm actually going to kick on the music right now. So if it sounds a little bit too loud or too quiet, um, let me know and I will see what I can do. All right, let's jump into it. And don't mind me. I'm kind of cramming energy drinks as I go. I've been studying all day and now I'm jumping over here. I'm trying to um, record the videos and edit them and then you know I still have some more studying I have to do so if you see me chugging energy drinks just bear with me and pretend you don't see me living such an under because um, I go about five or six of these all right so today we're going to be picking up on level eight which is hack this site basic mission and the description says Sam remains confident and an obscured password file is still the best idea but he screwed up with the calendar program. Sam has saved the unencrypted password file in the following location. However, Sam's young daughter, Stephanie, has just learned to program in PHP. Talented for her age, but she knows nothing about security. She recently learned about saving files and she wrote a script to demonstrate her ability. So you're already gonna be some of the history pop up of some of the various things I've done. Bear with me. But this level is all about SSI injections, which is a server side include injection, and it allows for SSI um, directives to be pushed through. Now, SSI is essentially allowing um, dynamic content to be shown in a web page without having to load or update the whole entire web page. You can also pull in multiple files using SSI, um, and it's very beneficial, but if improperly configured, it can increase vulnerabilities and the chance of being exploited to find um, personal information or private information like I'm going to show you right now. Um, so I personally haven't seen this anywhere else other than here. Usually when it comes to user input, you see a lot of uh, cross-site scripting, um, but you don't see too much SSI. So I tried to find some stats um, for how frequent these happen, uh, but I couldn't find anything. So I'm going off the assumption that in today's society we've kind of learned about configuration for something such as this there's probably a lot of lot better alternatives out there but you can avoid issues like this so i i don't expect us to see it too many times 
Um, but it's cool and it's fun, and uh, it was nice kind of getting a, a firm reminder and having to do some research um, because it did trick me a little bit. And I'm gonna show you what I end up doing to kind of start identifying um, this vulnerability so that I could export. So we're just gonna start off by entering in my tag, which is CyberMonkey. And we're gonna hit submit. And hopefully the music's playing. It looks like everything's playing well. I don't have it actually playing in my, my headphones. I have it turned off. I like to wear the headphones because I don't have to much, which to be honest, I'm, I'm not a big fan of my own voice. Uh, so it just helps out a little bit when I'm talking on. Now, as you see, we get this initial loadout, which is a PHP, um, but it also includes that link, which you can see is blue and underlined with here. So we're actually just gonna click on that and we can see that our name is included with an exclamation point and it tells us how many characters our name contains. Now, the first indicator that this was SSI vulnerable for me was that SHTML. Um, there's a couple different file types which show that it does allow uh, server-side include directives. Um, just because you do not see SHTML does not necessarily mean that the vulnerability is not there, but it does serve as a really good indicator that it is a possible SSI injection uh, somewhere. So we know that we just entered in that data into that um, input. Um, so now we're gonna test to see if they if they clean up the user input a little bit. That's the thing we wanna test out right now, if they do or if they don't. And if they don't, then that's another indicator that it probably is gonna be vulnerable to an SSI. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just actually gonna jump back to where we left off. And now we're just going to put in certain characters um, that are commonly included on a server side include directive. And if when we hit submit and we check that file, if it's still included in there, that's going to be our second indicator. Now there's a couple different characters that we can use. You can see them here. I'm just actually going to click the history, um, but you can see those are typically included on the uh, server side include directive. Um, so we want to keep an eye on those. Now we're just going to hit submit just like we did when we put in my name. And then we're just going to click that link again. And as you can see, every single one of those characters come through. Um, so that's a pretty good indicator that um, it is going to be vulnerable to a server side injection. And we're going to actually try to exploit that and see if we can get that to work out for us. Um, so same thing again, we're just going to jump back to where we started off. Um, so now we're going to start basically we're going to just kind of put in a really basic injection just to be able to test it um, I strongly encourage you to Look up and research the server-side injections and do a little bit of research on your own and kind of see how it works out for you um, It definitely goes a long way understanding it and just seeing it. So certainly do a little bit of reading on that um, so as you can see, I've already entered in a few commands. We're actually just going to use the ls command. Um, we are going to do an injection, and we're just going to test to see if it lists the contents of the directory. And if we do, then we're going to manipulate that to, uh, to actually get the password file that we need. Um, so once again, we're just going to hit submit there. Then we're going to click on that here link. And as you can see, it does list the directory contents. You see a bunch of shtml files. We have now confirmed and validated that it is vulnerable to an SSI injection. And now we're gonna start kind of figuring out how we can use that to our advantage to actually make it over to the next level, because that's what it's really all about. Now, we don't know the answer right off the bat, so it does take a little bit of logic and playing around with it. Um, and you might do that a few times before you find it, um, but we are gonna go through and I'm gonna show you a couple of those and then I'm gonna show you this. Um, so, All right, so we're just gonna enter in this one now. This was uh, actually the first one that I entered in just to kind of see what happened. And it, it took me kind of taking a look at the URL and playing around with the web page logic of it for me to actually get it. So this is the first one that I chose. And when you hit submit, <laughs> you actually get this nice little error message. It says, if you're trying to use a server side includes to solve the challenge, 
you're on the right track, but I limited the commands allowed to the ones relevant towards finding the password file for security reasons, because there will always be that one person who decides to execute some rather nasty commands. So please manipulate your code that, so that it is a little more pertaining to the level. And it's amusing, but it's true. There's always that one person that just wants to go and ruin everything for everybody. Um, so I can certainly understand why the admin actually did this. Um, and that's fine. Um, so we're going to work our commands a little bit and kind of see what we can get. All right, so we're gonna give this one a shot. We're just gonna see, but I believe this should probably be, given the logic of it, I believe this one should be correct. Um, and let's kind of find out and happen. All right, so it looks like we were a little bit short. So let's start playing around with it a little bit more. Um, So like I said, typically, you know, we, we play around with things a little bit and are kind of thinking of the logic of the site and kind of how it all goes. So we're going to keep going through. We're going to keep kind of playing with the site of it all. And um, from there, we should be able to figure out what exactly we're trying to do. Um, I actually did cat and that's actually not what I'm trying to do. I just realized my mistake now. Um, what I think I should actually be doing is LS. That, that makes more sense. So. You can already see that I just made a very basic mistake. Um, cat isn't, I don't think the one I'm looking for, the logic of it doesn't quite add up. Um, so let's try LS and let's just see if that if that works. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just using there that. And that's why automation, especially for testing for vulnerabilities, has become so incredibly popular because it, it becomes really, really easy for user error. I mean, if you think about the amount of vulnerabilities and different methods of exploitation that are just in web applications alone, um, SQLI, um, cross-site scripting, um, denial of service, um, SSI injections, um, you know, RFI, LFI, directory path traversal. I mean, there's a lot of different vulnerabilities and methods you can go about exploiting a web application to get personal data or get personal data. Um, so that's why automation has become so popular because I had completely forgotten about SSI injections because I just hadn't ran into a situation where I had to apply it in such a long amount of time. I've actually never seen it in the wild before. So this was a very good reminder that you know, can't be uh, too prideful because you can definitely uh, knock on your So let's hit submit here again and kind of see what happens. Um, it says you've been saved, click here. So then we're given this um, a couple different file listings. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my um, screenshot software to take a screenshot of this just so I can keep track of it later. I like to write little reports just so as I'm going through new machines, I might have forgotten an ex exploit or a vulnerability. So I can always kind of refer back to my notes. I like to kind of include screenshots and stuff, and I, I encourage you to do the same. It does help with uh, memory recollection, and it, it helps for understanding. So as you find a new exploit or a new vulnerability, definitely do some research more into that vulnerability. Look for proof of concepts, um, white papers, anything you can to fully understand that vulnerability is going to help you in the long run. Just knowing how to do this, you know, is fine and dandy for this one. But remember, these are basic missions. In the real wild, there's there's not going to be vulnerabilities. At least I hope not. There's not going to be as many vulnerabilities that are this simple to overcome um, or to exploit. So you want to learn these to uh, a deeper understanding, so that when in a real world scenario, you're still able to identify um, these possible. Um, so now we're just going to copy this PHP file. We're just gonna remove this shtml and let's just try dropping it. What happens. Ah. And we're just going to drop in there. 
All right, so I just forgot to, to backspace on that TMP. Um, once we did, we pasted in that, that PHP file, which you can see at the top of the URL. Um, once that loaded up, we can see a mix of numbers and uh, letters. So I'm gonna go off the assumption this is the password and I'm actually gonna copy this down. Um, and then we're gonna jump back over to where we started off at. And um, we're gonna kind of see what happens from there. Uh, so we're gonna go on and paste it into the password field. Hit submit and congrats. Congratulations, you completed basic eight again. No points awarded, I've already completed it. Um, so as you see, that is our initial introduction into a server side include injection attack. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, basic nine is another variant of a SSI injection. Um, so I'm going to go on and stop this video and then we're going to pick it back up into level nine and I'm probably just going to push out the two videos for this week. Um, but this is your introduction to an SSI. I strongly encourage you to definitely do a bit of your own research. There's, um, there's white hat security. They give a readout on, um, you know, on what SSI is. And I will include all the references that I use for my research as I started to go through and figure out what type of um, vulnerability was hidden within this one um, so it wasn't too challenging it was tricky especially since you don't see SSI as a really popular vulnerability um, but it was a lot of fun to do um, regardless so please like and share I will be pushing out more content as we proceed and I will catch everyone in the next video thanks everyone